afternoon. This is Felicity and I am speaking to you from my library and uh, this afternoon I thought I would produce another massive collection. <laughs> this time it's massive both in number and in weight. Um, I thought I would share some of the eye candy in my library, specifically my Tashin publications. And um, yeah, so this is going to be, this is, not, this is not arts and crafts, this is major, major picture book. And I have, I have Tashin spanning, I don't know, a couple, three decades, <laughs> as long as I've been buying books seriously. Uh, every time I go into a store that has a few or a lot, I've collected them and I look at them and some of them I look at again and again, and some of them just sit there waiting for me to, to have a little fun. So I'm going to get started because I believe I have 29 and they're all worthy, <laughs> worthy contenders. Let's start with the heaviest ones because they are um, taking up a big, huge space and they weigh a ton. So the first one, I have to set this back a little bit because it's huge remember if I've done a full one. I might have done an Instagram one for this guy. So uh, here we have oh, 25, 25th anniversary Cabinet of Natural Curiosities. This is Alberta Sebas and this all of the Tashins of course are um, are based except for their in informational ones. They are replicas of old very very uh, impressive works that uh, nobody can afford unless you happen to be a library or a museum or a, an art school or what have you. So this is the front and the back of the box. And the book itself isn't that much lighter. Well, let me take a look. So box, yay. Book, same dealio, only it's now the book and I can open it up and show it while I get my cardio and my weightlifting in for the day. <laughs> I got these ones at um, the Strand a long time ago. Um, it was a super fun trip. I went to this. It was I think my first visit to the Strand, and I um, and I I got at least a shopping cart's worth of books. Especially after they assured me with a big smile that they would be happy to ship back any books that I selected. So I picked up a giant stack of Tashins. This guy here is with a complete plate in color. And let's see if I can turn to one. This is a sample of the sort of thing that is in this one. I just picked it at random. These are um, these are colored illustrations. Each page in them is a natural curiosity. It goes does go from sort of the we'll call um, the beginning. Well, it's not really the beginning. Here's some nice plants. So this cabinet of curiosities would have been less um, a less scientific and more um, just a bunch of so a lot of fun things, things that were curious, things that were interesting. And I can't actually hold them. Up. I love to see sneakers are heavy. <laughs> All right, so cabinet of natural curiosities um, is one which can lay on the table and be looked at with uh, great pleasure. I'm not going to see too many of those. Oh, one more. Oh yeah, one more. <laughs> All right, here's a pretty one. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, so this is. And you can see because you can't see me, but this book is as big as big as big as the top half of me. And this, they're just gorgeous. And the paper is amazing. And and Tashin, this is this is a giant intro. I've got three huge books here, and then the rest of them are a bit smaller. So um, Tashin specializes in super super beautiful produced, not very expensive um, books. And they have some curiosities, which I don't think actually I do not have any curiosities in my collections. Not what I usually go for, um, uh, but they exist, and um, there's, there's a lot of different um, tashins out there that could be had should one so desire. So the second one of the gigantos here, this one I actually picked up here. I think it was at our local um, Barnes and Noble. Um, they used to have really, they used to have a really nice selection of different art books. They have had fewer in recent years. This is the box and. Um, they were having some kind of a sale. Maybe they were trying to uh, clear out some old stock, but I got this as a, a ridiculous price, and the biggest price I had to pay was lugging it back to work. <laughs> yeah, so this is the world of ornament. This is the Ratine and oh, this, this is Doberville. Now, I've got Ratine, um, I have Ratine uh, in, in other publications because it's a very important um, illustrator and a teacher of design and these are 
absolutely gorgeous. There's two volumes in it. And the, the covers themselves are really works of art. So there's a front cover, spine. Oh my goodness. So each one of these has um, this is collections of, this is similar to the, um, to the Owen Jones uh, Grammar of Ornament, except of course this is not an original. This is a re uh, reproduction, a very nice reproduction, and probably a slightly smaller than full scale. But as I say, good enough. <laughs> so this would be um, this would be uh, reproducing the plates, and of course the text is in, is trilingual in English, French, and uh, German, and it does represent, as does the Owen Jones Grammar of Ornament, um, a historical look uh, in time through uh, various different designs and ornaments. I'm thinking the resume I have is actually a. Um, might be one of the Dover reprints. No, the rest may the other, the big, the big beautiful plant one is a uh, different, different author. So there we go, volume one. What else is in here? Oh my goodness, yes, the Middle Ages. Let's move into the Middle Ages. <laughs> Why don't we? So this, these are just samplings because of course every single page, just like this, every single page is full of gorgeous reproductions. Again, this is a really pretty big book, not as big as the other one. So I can't get it up super close. But uh, let's just see. So volume two again, um, pretty front cover, good looking spine and absolutely gorgeous design back cover, which is probably some kind of a, um, I don't even know where even the end papers are. Phenomenal end papers. I can't even get it straight. <laughs> there we go. So end papers, um, all uh, the end papers derived from um, illustrations within. Here we go, Renaissance. Oh, actually, yeah, there was a um, the back cover was actually upturned right to it. How did I manage to do that? Uh, back cover was um, was from this particular illustration, and um, this one goes through. Let's see, 17th to 18th centuries. Let's find something pretty. Oh, this looks like a lot of paper. So it'll be a lot of different sources, and of course, one of the things that's really great too is it's it's in pretty vivid color, and because it is a very modern printing, um, it's going to be as close a color reproduction as possible on super super nice paper. Um, key card for over. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Good lord. Okay, there's stuff in there I haven't even looked at. Um, Looks like samples of embroidery there, and this is a this is this is just a tiny tiny little taste of these two gorgeous books. Which a box set is actually great because box sets tend to uh, the box tends to keep the, yes, the the actual volumes from getting too dilapidated too soon. Um, it just they're so big and so huge they probably live on the floor. I don't have any shelves big enough or strong enough to hold them. So the last of the giganto monster huge books is um, Complete Costume History. Here we go. Okay, and here is the Complete Costume History. This is the box. Again, 25th anniversary and the back cover. Now this one, I forget why I, this is my resume, I forget why I was doing this. I think I think this was actually a holdover from some early desire of mine. I saw this and I just I, I think I'd seen this in a very small, very boring little uh, little reproduction and I thought this is this is great. Besides I think the strand was having some massive sale on it, but it might have been my sewing days. So there you go. You want costumes? This is costumes. <laughs> so there's a um, all the different pages, there would be different pages or different countries, and then for each country and each period, they would have uh, costumes that were more or less representative of different cultural, economic, socioeconomic groups. There are some fancier people doing fancy things, uh, and it goes through the ages. So I think the very end of this book, Rasme was an earlier chap. So the very end, um, costumes from. Um, All right, this is costumes from probably the uh, yeah nineteenth century. Good heavens! Maybe even costumes and all kinds of things. A lot of a lot of cultural things, which 
Well, I could actually, if we're doing any kind of costume, this would definitely be the bee's knees. This is, this is really great stuff. So I haven't, oh, now I'm going to have to look at them again. Somebody was suggesting that I do a little tash and show and tell. So now that I've done that, of course, I'm going to be breaking into my July TBR, which is getting more and more uh, remote because I keep finding all these fun things to look at instead. <laughs> all right, so into the box with me. These are the, these are the pretty really 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 big tashins that I have and they are glorious and I've been for a while and they are worth all of the back ache that it took to actually um, move them from various point A's to point B's. All right so that was uh, that was that. Now I got um I've got uh, okay so now I'm gonna be begin with the smaller ones. <sighs> all right so let's start in the front. So here is called fashion and it is um, it is a the collection of the Kyoto Costume Institute a history from the 18th to the 20th century and uh, this is much more recent production than the costume uh, that I have the Rasune is actually very well known and it's it's a famous thing um, these are existing costumes and they do go back quite a ways the same as far back as the Rasune goes but they're photographs and they are um, much, uh, much clearer, of course, and uh, with a lot more detail. And sometimes you get, like here, you get really, you get little uh, uh, details of finer, finer things that are not included. For example, that was a painting that might have such characters in it. And occasionally it'll do a, like this, you'll, you'll have the costume and then you'll have a close up. You'll have a close up of uh, part of the, part of the garment. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, um, pretty unbelievable to wear such a thing, but oh my goodness, the colors and the fabric and the design and the patterns. I can't see myself wearing one, but mighty pretty. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. This is, um, what is it? Here's a, uh, this is a, this is like that kind of fabric that you see in the, uh, those classic obies, silk with an amazing brocade. Wow. Let's get rid of the little thing off the screen here. You can't see it, but I can. It's very irritating. There we go. Okay, so um, this is, again, it's a collection in Japan, but the costumes themselves, there are a number of, um, there are a number of Japanese uh, designers, Miyaki, Yamamoto, um, not surprising since it's a Japanese costume um, institute, uh, but the, um, the earlier ones, a lot of those were, uh, were European. Um, not really fancy thing here. Not not particularly um, based in any one um, uh, design house. So this is a this is a really nice book to look at. It's kind of a nice companion piece to the Razanay because you're looking at um, classic costumes, a lot of folk costumes, um, and and it is a very very well known book. It's stood the test of time, and it is a nice reference book. The Razanay is. Um, it's just really mighty pretty. And if you were actually into uh, doing any kind of uh, really serious fashion sewing, with this this would be kind of a reference book to have on your shelf, or even just something to look at when you are when you're tired of working. So that is that is design fashion. Um, and I have a whole bunch of other ones here. So now I have also lots of artists represented. Here is one of two books of Durer that I have in my library here. Um, this is, um, doesn't, he doesn't need any introduction, uh, but this, this is, uh, this is, this is the bigger one. I have a smaller Durer as well. They have different things in them. I thought this file was kind of, um, quite okay with having both in my collection. Let's see, here is, um, samples of different things that there are and of course it does also have a really excellent text to go with it sometimes the Tashin um, uh, essays the, the the descriptions that go with it are not that interesting sometimes they're a little strange and and um, uh, uh, weirdly phrased like they were not written in English which is okay because uh, who needs any kind of language to look at the pictures this is just just a few samplings here. This, so this is my my uh, Durer book. I, I have to say I think that most of these Tashans, 
except with one or two exceptions actually for me stand in as um as eye candy <laughs> really 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 high grade eye candy and who doesn't like a little eye candy now they, they are all themed so you know you can say yeah of course i i have, this is i'm interested in durer so i'm going to have a few i'm going to have a you know i'm going to have a few books that show some of the pictures because maybe i'm an expert on durer i just need to have some thing to kind of reference another one in that line oh this is because it's kind of like those things i love archimboldo what a crazy guy i love his statues his paintings which are which are composed of elements the book one of course the man the book man because his face is made entirely of books uh what's not to like right <laughs> but then of course he's the the famous ones are not the book one but um the different uh this one's falling apart unfortunately um, this is this is one of the famous ones. He did a whole the, the four seasons, and each season is made up of fruit or veg, uh, fruits or vegetables or plants that were that would be typical for that particular um, uh, season of the year. That particular one was um, autumn, um, and there was spring. But there's <laughs> I don't know. Do you think he's saying something about this guy? He's kind of a fishy dude. <laughs> a face like a fish. All right. That might be a chicken in there. I can tell. It's kind of maybe he didn't think very much of this fellow here. It was called the lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another one. Oh, there we go. Yes, he did not think much of lawyers. There's another one. Sweet. <laughs> uh, summer. Um, the librarian. Where did the librarian go? Yeah, of course he's the bookman, right? He's the librarian. Sweet. That's our man. So very clever and uh, this is not a parody this is actually a really kind of a nifty thing because yes a librarian is completely concerned with books and so his picture is completely made up of books I love that Archimboldo is it every time I see him in the museum I stop for a while and really admire but it's really, really great all right this one was um kept I didn't even realize this was Toshin until I went and looked I said please, please library thing, show me all of the books I have that are Tashan publications. And it said, this one is two. <laughs> Fancy that. Well, this is really great. This has got a lot of the classics in it. Masterpieces of Fantasy Art. Um, Boris Vallejo. Yeah. Boris Vallejo. Um, Richard Hescox. Somebody's going to recognize it. Like, I remember that book that came out of. You feel free to tell me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I remember this one. Barclay Shaw. That's creepy as all get out. Like, and who's watching who? <laughs> it is pretty fantastic. Okay, so that was uh, that was Martian Way. Um, all right, let's see what else. So they're all actually brilliant. Um, names and old ones. That one was um, uh, Vincent Segrel. Um, ooh. Huh. Heavy metal, huh? Corbin. Some of them might not have been published in a book. Some of them might have just been sort of produced as a um, as a sort of a thought piece. Let me see. I know Boris Vallejo. Boris Vallejo is a... Uh, holy cow. Yeah, I remember this one. This is... Um, Tarn's Moon of Gore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great stuff. Oh my goodness, yes. Um Barony. Ooh, this one I think was oh yeah, there was the um this is on without title, but I thought that might be the drowned city. I can't remember. It looks like it was something that was might have been used to um illustrate uh, the thing by by Ballard, but I guess I'm wrong because it says no title all right olivier o'berney um yeah these are these are and carl lundgren a couple of these are classics here that was one from masters of the hashomi <sighs> canonized fire great shot these are all great oh, oh. but wait there's more okay never mind <laughs> Uh, ah, Frazetta. Can't leave without looking at a little Frazetta. No, this is the one that's on the front cover. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Frank Frazetta. Um, these are all uh, yeah masterpieces. These are all utter and total classics. So this, this is this is really good stuff. Um, yeah, I know who they are, but um, I know who they are, but I'm getting tired of looking at them. 
Okay, so then the next one I have is Chagall. Um, these are paperbacks, so they don't weigh nearly as much. This has got this has got a lot of the sea in it. Everybody, everybody knows Chagall, which is pretty good. I didn't know that he did stained glass. That's kind of neat to see things like that there. And um, I just, I mean, every page, every page has so much picture goodness that you look at the text and the text is probably good and it's got to talk about the paintings, but um, much more, much more fun to look at the pictures and say, yeah, I know where that is or that's that's other museum or I know what this is representing. Uh, so yeah, Chagall. And I pretty much have the art books that I have in my collection here are ones which um, which mean something to me. There's plenty of art books out there that I am not, um, that I don't have that are sort of extremely worthy, worthy art books, but uh, well, you know, there's only so much time and money <laughs> and space. So you have to, have to pick and choose. Anyway, so this is my Tashin Chagall and it is, um, it's also starting to kind of come apart. These paperbacks were not quite as nicely made and I've had them for a long time. Okay, another one from my, I love this artist. I have, I don't have to give a reason why. Henry Rousseau, who I guess was considered a naive artist, but it's a, a very, very uh, interesting um, artist, naive or otherwise. And I really, I just something really sur surreal and um, surreal and, uh, and uh, innocent threatening and innocent at the same time with his artwork. Let me see this, I'll see if I can find the one that, uh, the carte Pierre-Junier, uh, carrying portraits. Oh, it looks like that's the same one, it's on the front cover, it's just, it's the full thing. And um, that is, that is one of them. The other is the, the other is the um, Sleeping Gypsy. Let me see if I can find the one that, um, Oh my, yeah, no, not that one. <laughs> yeah, so, um, um, I'm so crazy things flying overhead. I wonder what they happened to the, I'm not sure it was in here. It must be in here. I would have gotten if it didn't have my favorite painting in there. Let me see, maybe it's not. Um, it's the tiger, the one with the tiger. Where did it go? Maybe it's at the back. Maybe it's not there. Ah, no, there it is. It wasn't the tiger, it was this one. Yeah, so, okay, Felicity is one of Felicity's favorite paintings. Yeah, I didn't really dig that. So, okay, so this, that for me is the exemplar, and okay, it's a lion, and it is eating um, a poor small furry animal. This is actually, this, that's right, this is part of the Jungle series. Yeah. Wow, there you so. I really, really like that. Okay, so. And here's one. This has got a lot more text and a lot less pictures. The text in this one is the one that I was thinking is just not that interesting, but the pictures that are there are gorgeous. So this is um, this is a uh, Art Nouveau, but more in the material, not so much in the painting or the design. This is plenty of design, uh, but there's a lot of objects in this one. Oh, yes, beautiful bowls, pots, silver, woodwork. Uh, things that are not paintings or, well, say, um, paintings or, or uh, more abstract type of materials, but material material like glass and crystal and, and um, uh, jewels and um, furniture, pots, the things that, that we use that are, that, that have as their exemplars on the back page of this is really pretty too. Ah, back cover to the, back cover to the book. I'm not sure I'd be able to live there. <laughs> I'd be afraid to touch anything. <laughs> That's pretty great. So this has got, oh, it does have a few things. So it has some um, covers. So it does have some design things. And it, it actually, it's nice in that it divides up, um, it divides up the whole movement of Art Nouveau or the period of Art Nouveau into different subsections as we now call them. So that uh, if you're curious as to what makes, say, the, the German style or the French style or the English style, it's not really an English style so much, but uh, it's broken out into 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 different areas. And oh yes, well there's, there's Tiffany and the American, <laughs> American and French. 
So yeah, this is uh, Art Nouveau, and it, it, is, it, it is a very, very pretty book. And I don't think I've actually read all the words in there, but um, I certainly have looked at all the pictures. <laughs> all right, Art Nouveau. Uh, this one I've had for a really long time. This might, I don't think this is, what book is my parents or mine? I don't think so. My mom or I might have just gotten this because, yeah, I really need to have my own copy of Escher. This is, uh, it says Taco on it, but in my library thing, it says that it's actually Tashin production. So I'm not absolutely sure about this one, but it might as well be Tashin because it's just that beautiful. And it certainly is produced beautifully enough and it has everything in it that you could want or ask for. And yes, I am a really, really, really big fan of M.C. Escher. Uh, I think he was a genius and I think that his work deserves to have uh, more than just uh, the title of craftsman or draftsman attached to it because his, what, a, what a visionary. This is really, he's really, he's really amazing. Um, yeah. Probably just, there's actually there is a tiny bit of text at the beginning, but not so much as you'd notice. And and um, <laughs> yeah, the little guys, the little roly poly guys. Great book, I love this one. I know that I'm gonna even be um, my TBR is dead for the day because I will be looking at all of these later. So this was a funny one. Um, an Escher Kaleidocycles. This is a do-it-yourself book. Um, it is a book, and as you can see, it has been it has been um, it has been mutilated because <laughs> I got this and realized that what this had in it was um, you take out the card uh, the cardboard the card inserts and you cut them and you tab them and you glue them and what you have in the end are three dimensional objects. It's very cool, and um, it actually is more work than you'd think. And there's a pattern, and and there's some math involved. <laughs> And uh, it does require some some patience. Um, when you're done, each one that you produce is really beautiful. And you could actually put a string on the top and you could make a mobile if you had somewhere to hang it. You certainly couldn't put it on one's walls because one's walls are covered with bookshelves. But um, they, they do make they do make really beautiful or some some uh, some sort of like uh, illustrations of the original artwork. And then when they get turned into uh get turned into the actual um where's it there we go um the object itself it sort of looks something like this anyway this is pretty cool and i had to look because i couldn't remember where i put this but uh it's in a box waiting for me to finish the rest of the uh <laughs> kaleidocycles so there you go yeah and this is one of their really classy productions this is uh Insects of Cerna, Maria Sibylla Marian, another one of my um, botanical heroines, heroes, heroines. She's, uh, she was um, 17th century, 18th century, 17th century. Um, maybe wrong there. Oh, let's just see, what does it say about her? Um, extremely costly journal. So she was um, 1647 to 1717. Uh, as she was the uh, daughter, granddaughter of a family of dedicated um, uh, uh, printers and, and artists, creators of lithographs, etchings, publishings, uh, and she, the they kind of didn't fall for, too far from the tree, but she very uh, early on exhibited a very unfeminine um, penchant for studying and drawing bugs no pretty garden flowers for her and the um, even if she'd only just produced a couple of things she her name her name would have been made forever but uh what she did that this that has made her um that has made her name uh really important in the botanical world is that she went to suriname at great personal health expense and she documented she had caught for her and she she had she uh, she couldn't do too much collecting herself but she uh, had a bunch of uh, beaters and collectors that collected the plants and the insects and the animals that were on them uh, and sifted through the wheat from the chaff to say that they brought her whatever they bought and then she would say well this is you know I can't use this because this is not how it was or this is the wrong kind and she would keep giving instructions and she would keep getting more things she drew everything 
the, the, the climate of Suriname was completely inimical to her health. Uh, she died a lot sooner than she should have because she did um, spend too long and she was sick the entire time she was there and yet she produced this enormous and really amazing body of work. There's some pretty creepy stuff in here too. Like I can't actually look at the spider pictures. Like I'm not going to show you because they're really creepy. But her plant illustrations with the insects that would be on them are fantastic. They are not wonderful. They're fantastic in the sense that they're perfect um, and they're perfectly executed. Uh, I saw, um, when I was at the Huntington, I saw an original of this one and that was that was stunning. Uh, you can't get up close. You couldn't, you know, really see it. It was in a glass case. Uh, but just seeing the real thing what, put the goose shivers on you. Just like looking at that, going like, this is a lady who uh, did went bucked every trend. Did not do what anybody said. She divorced her husband, or her husband divorced her. I don't know which way around it was. It might have been mutual. And went and did the thing that she needed to do. So, Maria Sibylla Marion, what a gal. Anyway, I got the book. Of course, I did. But this is one of their this is one of their luxury ones because it's got that sort of like almost uh, leathery binding. It's not leather. It's a it's a it's a paper simulation. But it's a really classy it's a really classy looking book. Uh, beautifully published, produced as everything Tashin does. Oh, this is a this is really gorgeous. I'm very happy to have this one in my library. That's not going anywhere. All right, and let's see, move right along. So here we have, ah, uh, we've already heard of this guy. Yeah, I've got my Dolly. Yes, okay, so, um, <laughs> Dolly in my library. I think this is the only Dolly I have. I think this is the only Dolly I have. Uh, and it is like everything else. It is pretty complete. It's pretty amazingly produced. I might have actually got this when I was at one of the shows. I didn't go to a Dolly show, but I saw this at the, one of the museums probably, and said, oh, I'm pretty sure I need this. Yeah. Um, three faces in Gala, so how was his life? Um, some of the, Dolly kind of got a bad rap because, he, probably deservedly, because he uh, commercialized a lot of his work. Um, a lot of his work, he was uh, very much needing money and so he figured well he might as well use his art to make money and so he did and so it was uh, the, this was a widely reproduced uh, image uh, my aunt had that on her wall she was um, she, that was the, the picture of that that was the thing that she would do and there was certainly other ones that she would never have had in her wall but um, are perhaps just a titch more interesting um, Let's see, so some of the early ones, I don't know if they are soft construction with boiled beans, maybe maybe this is already starting to get into the kind of commercialized thing, but he was a, he was a consummate um, technician. He really, he mastered the craft of painting. And uh, he was also a great artist. He just uh, sometimes produced things that he produced to, to, get, uh, to get money fast. I suppose there's nothing really wrong with that. Sometimes you look at some of his earlier things and you think, what would he have done? What would he have done if he sort of like went that route instead of saying, I will just produce what I need to produce to 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 promote promote myself and to uh, make as much money as I can to support myself doing the things I do. Is that any different from uh, going and joining a band and being a musician? I don't know. All right, next we have, all right, speaking of commercializing and the, the, uh, the opposite, <laughs> Van Gogh, not much commercializing there, poor guy, um, but I have Tashin's two volume set of um, Van Gogh and uh, Complete Paintings, volumes one and two, and uh, the, earless, the earless Van Gogh in the back. The younger Van Gogh in the back, uh, and of course we, we obviously have his poor benighted brother to thank for the fact that we actually still have them because he was his one of his very few supporters. But these are uh, so this is volume volume one. Um, there are the complete paintings, so everything's going to be in here, and they are they're all in there. Uh, 
Um, so portraits. And now, of course, we can't imagine why anybody wouldn't want to completely lionize Van Gogh because he was a visionary, like William Blake was a visionary, only um, Van Gogh didn't have any other support but his, his brother. He was also, he had a lot of um, emotional problems, obviously. I mean, he was, uh, he wasn't deranged, but he had huge swings of mood and um, depression and manic activity and um, productiveness. There was a Van Gogh museum that I went to in, um, in Holland that was pretty phenomenal. So I just, and then this, this one just does have all these really nice, uh, nice full pictures, details, um, nicely produced. The color seems it seemed to me that when I saw them in person that they were they were more more brilliant. The color was more more vivid, and that could be. I mean, a, a book is a book is just a book. You didn't hear me say that. <laughs> you didn't hear me say that. Um, uh, but there you go. So sunflowers. Oh, Van Gogh sunflowers. You'll never look at sunflowers again the same way. It's really beautiful. I'm going to keep moving along here because uh, I'm not done yet. There are more books. <laughs> How did that happen? All right, so that's Van Gogh. And I also have in those one of those lovely two volume box sets is I have, yes, Gaudi. One of the main reasons that I would like to go to Barcelona someday because there it is, the fountain of all Gaudi goodness. And this guy here is actually, these are paperbacks. It's all right. It was in the box set. It's not going to get hurt. Um, two volumes, a lot of pictures in of the Sagrada Familia. Um, we're not a big surprise there, but this actually has, uh, that has a lot of, it says complete work, so uh, how can you get complete pictures of, of architectural things? But it does a really good job of actually capturing um, in progress, uh, capturing um, the bits and pieces, um, capturing some of the organic this is not this isn't this is not one of them um the organic uh style that he developed that was so amazingly and uniquely gaudy um let's see so this is volume two that's two oh yeah okay there you go there's a couple of pictures that show themselves again the decorator so there's the he they, they've broken it up into different sections talking about the parts of his um of his creative oeuvre and Lots of really nice details. This is this is a fabulous book. Um, so there you go. This is a oh, this is Tashin. Maybe it's not. I thought it was Tashin. No, maybe it isn't. <laughs> maybe I'm just fooled into thinking it is. Ah, the interloper. Maybe Gaudi is not Tashin. Just looks like one. Okay, moving along here. I think it was. Who knows? Okay, so here we go. Great. I went to a great exhibit. It was glorious. I really enjoyed that. And I bought every single book that museum exhibition had on the grid, including this one. Um, I, really, I think it's, I think Magritte was pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Classic pictures there, classic um, images. Um, the mole member with the funny nose. That was that was pretty crazy. Philosophical lamp. <laughs> All right. Um, who's? Oh, I like the apple. The apple is good. Let's, let's see if I can find. There's a couple that. Um, there were three books. Maybe not all of them had all of the pictures. I'm trying to see. Let's see if the. Um, let me see if the this is, this is one of the cool ones. I like that. That um, now you see and now you don't. So there's the uh, moving through the trees. It's an optical illusion, but it's a very gentle one, and you don't realize until you look at it closely that this can't be. That's the kind of thing that uh, the kind of thing that I really appreciated in um, Remedius Varro's of uh, work. This is uh, that that kind of. A really technical mastery 
uh, with artistic vision and excellence of the enchanted realm. That's pretty crazy. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Where'd it go? Uh, maybe it's not here. Uh, yeah, things are really, really, really pretty great stuff. So, um, 233, very difficult time to be painting or doing anything. Um, the Portland Assassin. The one that I saw was one which was one of those, the, the mirror ones, which he was, which were so amazing uh, that he did, that was um, a mirror that's, might have been one of the other books, a mirror, uh, a, a painting, which is a paint, a landscape, a landscape painting, which he then, um, which you're looking at the landscape and the only reason you can tell the painting from the landscape is there is an easel, a very small piece of the easel showing, and they don't have it in this one. Oh. Is my passion the greet? Nope. All right. So, Frida Kahlo, another favorite artist of mine, and um, this is one of their little paperbacks, but pretty nicely produced one. And uh, this is uh, this is more of a taster, I think. It has it has a lot of her paintings. Um, there she is in the back. A lot of her paintings, a lot of her productions. Um, and story of her life. Um, her life is uh, very much bounded by pain. Um, but she came from a well-to-do family. There she is with her husband Diego Rivera, then husband Diego Rivera, and um, she did amazingly, considering that she was in pain all the time. And her painting does reflect that because she does have, um, she does have, um, she does have a lot of, she does have a lot of images of, um, that, that reflect that, um, the areas in which she lived and worked. So Frida Kahlo and the other, the other Durer book, The Little Rabbit, Love the Rabbit. And this is a this is a really sweet thing. It's actually, I like this one almost a little bit better because it has a lot more of the drawings and in watercolors, the sepias, which is which is pretty cool. All right, um, it has it has some of the same it has some of the same uh, drawings and sketches, but more sketches in this one than in the other one, which had a lot of the paintings in it. All right, so now we're going to move on to things which are not painters. Uh, these are various collections. So thus is, I'll probably move along here because we're pushing up to the hour mark. Contemporary graphic design. This is actually pretty crazy. I got this because I thought, hey, I should have it. And then I realized when I was looking through it, I probably would not ever design this way or uh, create this way. But the um, but what it presents is many, 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 many different designers and just a sampling of what they're doing. And some of it is pretty crazy stuff. And some of it is font work and design. And it's even if you don't touch it, you still uh, say, you know what, that's really interesting. How did they come up with that? Especially when you're given some, occasionally you're actually given like a preliminary sketch and that is interesting. How does an artist or a designer start from one thing and get to another? Mostly it's finished. Uh, it's finished pieces. Um, I remember looking through this thinking first, like, why did I get this? Oh, yeah, there were some pretty amazing things in there. Uh, this is just a little sampling of what's in there. Um, a little sampling of what's in there. Uh, what does somebody do when they're asked to have a, a design a poster, um, design a font, design an advertisement? You do what you have to do. You go to school. You figure out what people need. So this is uh, this is usually work that's um, that's produced for a specific requirement for somebody that has hired them or engaged them to do um, to do a project to um, produce uh, to produce something um, specific. And these are some of the best results. 
that actually are iconic as well as just being the thing that they did the, to fulfill the project and to s satisfy the um, the client. I think it's pretty cool. So this is um, this is a this is the most different one that I have. Most of the other ones I have are kind of you'd expect the sort of thing that I, I would have. <laughs> All right, so let me look at this one here. This is a beautiful, beautiful work. This is Yoshiga, uh, 100 famous views of Edo. It's lovely. It's eye candy. I don't need to know the Japanese. There's actually a, a description of each one of these, but um, these are the famous views of Edo. And yeah, it doesn't quite turn to it, but <laughs> um, Mount Fuji is everywhere. So here's, uh, let's see, so, um, yeah, I think this one does it uh, chronologically because there is definitely a progression. Um, they're all, they're all, they're all wonderful. And they, they, they bear with uh, um, studying and, and looking at a little bit more closely because there's a lot of um, detail that when you look at it really closely, you see it's very fine and there's something going on in the way that you often see in, in Japanese and Chinese paintings, especially the scholarly ones, where uh, the landscape is everything and the people are very small. Uh, this, is, this is a gorgeous book. So it's in my library and I also, here is a couple more. I've got uh, another floral legium. I'm rather fond of plants. Can't grow them but I sure like pictures of them. And Florilegia and botanical drawings are absolutely my bag. I really love that. I'm just going to skim through because we are definitely coming up on the hour mark and I don't like going over an hour because this seems an awful long time to have a video going on. So this is um, Prince Bishop Johann Conrad von Gemmingen founded the famous garden at Einstadt. Uh, sorry, at Eichstadt in the early 17th century, magnificent diversity was documented in no fewer than 367 copper plate engravings published in 1613 by the Nuremberg apothecary Basileus, Basilius Bessler under the title Hortus Eistetensis. Eisten, Gosh, I can't quite say that right. Anyway, so this is all, this is all um, his work on uh, reproducing the that fantastic garden. And on the same note, because I found them next door to each other at the Strand, and so of course I got them both, A Garden of Eden. And this is a collection of um, botanicals from a lot of different gardens. And I have some sampling here going from, they do actually go from uh, earlier to, uh, to later. And they gradually, you can see a very, very typical and unrecognizable progression from the early star, a style of herbals to a much more uh, sophisticated and detailed um, a kind of a botanical, I call them botanicals for want of a better name for them, uh, plants, uh, with the very stages of the plant's life and uh, microscopic divisions of seeds if they exist. Yeah, you can see them down there. This is this is kind of like the classic design there. Where you have down there, you have the um, the, the parts of the plant, uh, the peripheral parts of the plant, accessories, <laughs> seeds and whatnot, and um, now they were already up in 1850s, and this is uh, this is. Uh, uh, just showing different styles. Um, they are all from famous gardens. This one is from um, Quercus. This is, a, this is a oak. There is um, this is already much more the modern style that I would recognize. It. It's, it's really gorgeous, and uh, it benefits that they actually the text on this one is pretty good, uh, and it's helpful. And there's still way more pictures than our text, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, this is gorgeous. And there, okay. Um, Is my tash and wash. <laughs> the complete works. It's a little guy. He's got a big one too, but um, I just realized I can put too many big books in my library. So um, this was the smaller one, and I have Instagrammed this guy a few times. I have poured over these illustrations many and many a time because they're Bosch. <laughs> a garden of earthly delights. Oh, yeah. Um, let me see. Garden of Earthly Delights. Well, this is not going to be any surprise to anybody because it is, um, yeah, that's pretty crazy stuff. 
uh, oh yeah this is one of my favorite ones the one at the end there is the uh, the miser dying left I can't take it with you <laughs> This is just genius. I love Bosch. And I'm not actually, I don't need to talk about Bosch too much because I think pretty much everybody knows who he is. This is a really nice, nicely done book. And it kind of opens right there to some of those pictures because I have looked at them more than once. Um, yeah, I, I would love to see them again. I would love to see them in person, but that's just not something I will have to armchair travel to all these fantastical locations to see these amazing paintings. Right now I'm coming down to the to some slightly different things here. This one is Tiffany. So this one's got a really pretty little uh, um, cover, which which uh, sort of pastels out the uh, the, uh, the glass of Tiffany. It was more than glass, but glass was what he was known for, and this is. Delightful, really wonderful. So yeah, this is this has got um, it's got a lot of pots. It's got some design in it too, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, saw that I I don't I don't remember what I paid. I don't think I care. She might have gotten it from Rose. And there's a this must have been some kind of exhibition thing because at the back is a little thumbnail for all of the things that are represented, um, either in the book or otherwise. Um, I don't have any I'm not gonna have any but I got the book <laughs> all right so here's um, kind of classic lamps here's this dragonflies ultimate art nouveau dude there um, I think at the beginning there should be some of the um, knock them dead yeah stained glass Pretty window. Yes. Autumn landscape. We've seen these before. Really beautiful. So yeah, I've got a um a beautiful book on Tiffany from Tashin. Okay. Medieval and Renaissance art. Um candy. This is just this is this is this is great. So this is Carl Becker, um, complete plates. It does have a descriptive text. There's a little intro that kind of talks through some of it, um, but mostly what's in there are some objects, um, designs, costumes, other designs. A lot of designs. Some of these actually mentioned in them this is a design of an object that no longer exists because it was destroyed in the war or because it, you know, it was from an ancient um, it was from an ancient uh, manuscript that we don't know what happened to the object uh, so there are actual objects here and there are a lot of designs of um, and a lot of design so these are actual objects but then a lot of designs of um, things that were from this period medieval and renaissance art all right, so got three more to go here. I'm saving the, the different ones for last. All right. Cities of the world. Um, maps, sort of. Yeah, they are. They're maps. This is um, London. Maps of everywhere. Pictures. Uh, pictures. So these are cities of the world represented by various art many many different artists and again it is one of those um, just kind of settle down put your headphones on have some good music going um look at the pictures read the text but look at the pictures so this is um george brown and franz hogenberg uh, cities of the world this is one that i think i've shown on instagram before this is a this is pretty this is pretty cool alchemy and mysticism um, and it is uh, the hermetic museum and it is yeah alexander rube yeah and it pretty much talks about everything to do with um the guys presumably gals who are in 
on this field of endeavor from the beginning to uh, about now because it's kind of a um, it's kind of a, a little obscure science now is um, is uh, alchemy uh, but it's got some great pictures great really great pictures um, there's a whole set in here that shows the um, that shows the uh, the um, the alchemical life I'm not going to get into that um, but this is this is if you are interested at all in alchemy this is a book to have and if it floats your boat I mean I actually have Jason Harrigan's got them in his library hi Jason <laughs> um, but this is a um, this is this is this is a really great compendium with a lot of information and speaking of information there is one last one to go and that's this guy here the book of symbols and it is way too dense to even get into because I'm at the hour mark so I'm just going to tease you with this one the book of symbols it's really fat um, it has a lot of information in it I'll just show you a couple of pictures no I'll show you one yeah, let's have a picture for example here so you have Athena the symbol and this one there you go all right so that was my passion collection that took almost an hour um thank you for watching if you actually got this far um, I hope you've enjoyed my little romp through my uh, my Tashin art gallery and have a hopefully you are having an excellent weekend my weekend's just begun and yours is probably possibly just finishing or maybe all of your days are weekends in which case congratulations see you next time bye bye